country boy. Come on, tell me, man. Move up. Wait a minute, man. You know the way to milk clean. You have money. If you have money, you go anywhere, you know. One, two. One, two, three, four. You didn't believe me? Didn't I tell you I was going to be famous one day? Hello, everybody. We're back again on the Reggae Appreciation Society. It's been 50 years since the release of The Harder They Come, which hit Jamaican movie theaters in the summer of 1972 and shook up the world, both visually and audio-wise. In the main role, it starred a then up-and-coming but now legendary reggae artist, Jimmy Cliff. It made history as the first Jamaican feature film and was also the first to get a worldwide release. It was an enormously successful movie, both locally and internationally, with huge commercial returns from the UK, the US, and even as far as Asia. It's been celebrated as a groundbreaking movie for a good number of reasons, but the most important feature of the movie's success is the magnificent achievement of showcasing the natural Jamaican culture and urban imagery for the world to see and inadvertently sow the seeds of what became a mighty global reggae movement. This was due to the movie's amazing soundtrack, which we will analyze a bit later in the video, so stick around for that. This musically driven crime drama was the creation of Jamaican filmmaker Perry Hensel, who wanted to make a movie that not only portrayed the Jamaica scene in postcards, but wanted to really highlight the urban imagery in all its grittiness and realistic splendor. It tells the story of the life of Jimmy Cliff's character, Ivan, a gawky, naive country boy who leaves the village and comes to the capital city of Kingston with the dream of becoming a famous reggae star. His mother, who already lives in Kingston, isn't too pleased to see him and doesn't let him stay with her. To survive, he gets a job in a repair shop on a piece of land owned by the local church and starts a love affair with a pretty young orphan girl who attends and lives in the church. Unfortunately, the pastor of that same church had very unholy designs on the same girl and it leads to problems for Ivan. Ivan eventually gets to record a great song that is sure to be a hit, but gets cheated out of all of the money by a greedy record producer who pays him just $20 for all rights to the song. Ivan is frustrated at every turn and eventually becomes a ganja dealer and a gangster who becomes known around the country. The movie was based on the true life story of a real life Jamaican gangster called Ivan Martin, known in the streets as Raijin, the first rude boy. The real-life Raijin became notorious in 1948 after escaping from prison, committing a string of robberies and murders before being cornered by the police and shot. Jimmy Cliff delivered a mesmerizing performance, but the real star of the movie was the soundtrack, which has over the decades since it released been adjudged as one of the greatest reggae albums of all time. Aside from the amazing musicians who actually made the music, all credit goes to the director, Perry Hendel, who knew the power of using reggae music and its potent conscious messages to enhance the narrative of the story. Rolling Stone and Time magazines have both listed the soundtrack among the greatest albums of all time across all genres. And in 2021, the Library of Congress chose to preserve the movie in the National Records Registry. If you haven't seen the movie, I strongly advise, no, no, I beg you, go and look for the movie and watch it. After I watched the film, I found myself humming the songs unconsciously for days. It's this sort of quality in the use of music that created legions of new reggae fans from around the world. People literally left the cinemas and began to look for the soundtrack. Up until the movie came out, Jamaican music had been dismissed worldwide as music on the fringes and not part of the mainstream. Despite the one-off hits by the likes of Millie Small and her song My Boy Lollipop and Desmond Decker with his song The Israelites, but the harder they come, he raised all doubts and unleashed a wave that would develop into a movement that has never stopped. The album was produced by legendary Chinese Jamaican producer Leslie Kong, who was the man responsible for the biggest reggae hits from the late 1960s up until the early 1970s by the likes of the Pioneers, Toots and the Metals, the Melodians and the star of the movie, Jimmy Cliff. Funny enough, it was Leslie Kong who discovered Jimmy Cliff after Cliff first moved from the countryside to Kingston to find opportunities in the music industry, just like the character in the movie did. Jimmy Cliff delivered some of the most iconic songs of his career in that soundtrack with songs like You Can Get It If You Really Want, Sitting In Limbo and what many perceive as his masterpiece, Many Rivers To Cross. Two Animators also performed some wonderful songs on the album like Sweet and Dandy, A Wedding Song and Pressure Drop. Desmond Decker, who was at the time the biggest reggae star in the world, threw down his classic in the thumping 007, which blended excellently with the movie. 
A song that is one of my personal favorites from the soundtrack is Rivers of Babylon by the Melodians. The first time I saw the movie, I was shocked to find out that Bonnie M won the original performance of that classic. The music created a fantastic platform for reggae to take over the hearts and minds of new fans that ran into millions of listeners. It was no coincidence that within a year of the soundtrack's release, that Bob Marley and the Wailers scored huge international acclaim with their Catch a Fire and Burning albums. If the harder they come was the petrol, the Wailers were the spark that lit up reggae as the global phenomenon we know it as today. One awesome example of the impact of the movie and soundtrack on reggae's global takeover is when you consider how the harder they come overran an Asian country almost 13,000 kilometers away. When it was shown in Japan, it unleashed the vivid sights and sounds of Jamaica and triggered a fascination with reggae and Jamaican culture that is still going strong today. Tourists began to choose Jamaica as their preferred destination and many of them brought back records that only helped to grow an already huge and growing fan base. And by 1975, the pioneers whose songs were also featured on the soundtrack became the first reggae band to set foot on Japanese soil. Today, Japan is one of the most reggae-crazy countries on earth and boasts of more sound systems than Jamaica itself. The Harder They Come has gone down as the greatest movie to come out of Jamaica and even the Caribbean. It not only gave us one of the best reggae albums, but put reggae on the map when it came out 50 years ago. So there you have it. Thank you for watching the video today. Please leave a like, subscribe, and we'd love to hear from you. So please leave a comment in the comment section. And until next time, Jobless.